Hello, welcome back to my channel, Euphoria Arts. Today I will be making some concept art. I'm trying to get a lot better at it because it's not my specialty, but it is my favorite type of art. This is the mood board I created to this song by Kier called Voices. All right, so that was just a little sample of the song. I'll be using this one, this reference as my main reference. And I chose these for my mood board because I felt that it really depicted some aspect of the song that I really liked. It just had that creepy vibe. So that's why we got the black spaghetti. Apparently, the song is categorized under goth salad. The genre. <laughs> hey, every day you learn something new, don't you? So if you've never created a mood board before, I find these pictures on Pinterest. I search up some of the concepts that I do like. Or like I'll search something creepy. Or right there was like I searched a black salad. Gothic salad. And I eventually find something. So I put my main reference on its separate uh, file because I like to do the references side by side with my canvas so I can get a general idea about how the character is going to look and utilize the reference to its fullest potential. So here I'm mainly focusing I'm drawing the head. Like I said, I don't draw everything 100% because this ends up being changed. Um, sometimes I can go in and just draw freehand without just drawing the circles. So throughout the video, what I'm going to be doing is if I am doing the same thing I've already explained, I will kind of fast forward it a little bit so you can see a little sped up so you're not there five minutes me trying to draw a hand because you already know how I feel about elbows and hands at perspectives and like I said before you will hear a lot of ambience noise I'm working on it I actually got my new camera in uh, how's the song sound quality testing testing one two three <laughs> bad joke all right well yeah that's what I will be doing throughout the video so if you see it sped up and you kind of want to see it at a lower speed you can slow it down in the YouTube settings and that should help out a little bit so here I am going with the fancy arms um, trying to figure out the whole perspective situation I started up first doing the um, <laughs> the shirt and then I realized wait a minute I'm not keeping that same style of clothing or the shirt and so here I probably say one of the biggest things you could learn is how to use your hotkeys like the control T there's also a way if you're using a tablet pen um, that you can set up your um, what do they call them quick keys hot keys and there's also command keys that you go in you click alt and you just move your brush and it'll make your pen size larger or smaller without you having to switch out from what you're doing so I'll probably make a video of how to configure all that at some point for anyone using Clip Studio Paint. I do have Photoshop, but I very seldom use it for art because it doesn't have the time lapse feature. I I'm picky. I'm picky. I used to love Photoshop like the very first software that I ever learned how to use was Photoshop like I had Photoshop CS2 for the longest time 
I'm not kidding. I had it for the longest time. I still have it in one of my computers. And then I'm like, wow, outdated. I updated all my Photoshop, <laughs> paid the supremely high subscription before you could just buy it in one shot. Now you got to pay a subscription every month. That's crazy. So I prefer Clip Studio Paint for that fact because if I decide I no longer want to pay for the Creative Cloud, I still have Clip Studio Paint. And with Clip Studio Paint, you can actually buy the full version. They do have the subscription option, but you can buy it. Like I always wait around Black Friday. And the one I have, I believe, is Clip Studio Paint Pro. But I am saving money to get EX um, next Black Friday. Because... <laughs> People know I like being budget friendly, but if you're looking into some software, I highly recommend Clip Studio Paint for illustrations and art like this. If you're looking into making more logos and stuff like that, people say you want to go with Adobe because the vector files and the way it processes everything, honestly, everything's a learning curve, like I said. I used Adobe for so long and then I came back to it and I didn't understand it <laughs> and that's how bad it's gotten and even the experts if you watch some of their lives even the experts at some point don't know what some of the features are for or how to get some of their tools for so I actually like this process more than my other ones because I thought that the hairstyle that I had chosen for this character was a bit more unique than the ones, than the generic ones I use. So I highly recommend making mood boards and finding your inspiration in other things. That's a great way to get out of your comfort zone, which I haven't utilized that tool in a long time. I usually don't create mood boards. And when I do is I use one reference photo and I completely forget that I have a mood board <laughs> uh, and the times where I usually use the mood board to its fullest extent is when I'm doing brand designing for a business or company so that's when you'll see me really reel out the mood board and utilize it so here I'm doing the hair and I'm thinking maybe you know I kind of want the hair on the table so then it it's gonna be incorporated with the black noodles just just there just thinking about like bugs on the table and in that extra creepy element <laughs> I I don't really know how to paint noodles or like make them look realistic but I guess we're gonna find out right we will find out how this turns out but yep yeah. So, I must say though, like, it was a lovely surprise at how much I actually liked this hairstyle. I saw it and I was like, mmm, yeah, this might go over her face, but I still like this style. So, every now and then you'll see that fancy dialog box pop up and that's pretty much the autosave function that failed me last time. Don't know why I didn't save. But here's a nice trick for you. On your keyboard, click Control S and it will save your work wherever it is. So just do that throughout your work and you'll be solid. Okay, so in this part, you kind of see me struggling. Um, I accidentally moved something and it just threw my whole setup out of whack. So you see me go through a whole process here trying to figure out where my layer went, what happened what's going on with the settings I'm like okay which ones was my workspace I picked Illustrator did not like that setup um, that was a big pain so apparently I like to use the comic workspace setup but you can actually set it up how you like and create a new setup for that so that's actually a good tip something good to use so you always have a consistent setup 
and you're not fumbling around. So I tried drawing the crown, did not like it. <laughs> I hated how it was looking so bulky and I was like, I try to, I want to make it a little bit different, a little bit different. Sometimes you don't got to go that different for it to look good. <laughs> so I just made the brush a little bit bigger and just added it there. Um, sometimes I forget that I'm working on the draft layer so it doesn't need to look perfect in the beginning. It just needs to get the idea out. So pretty much this crown looks very bold. Uh, the line work is not going to be that bold. This is just a way for me to remember that I don't have to keep everything tight and perfect for a drafting layer. I sometimes gotta remind myself that it's a draft. Some people make their draft like perfect line work, but that's not me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mention this because I noticed that when I do art, I always forget to do this. And hopefully I mention it enough times that I will start to remember to do this. Flip your canvas. Flip your canvas. You can even go to the very top and you can change the shortcut keys to have the letter F to flip your canvas horizontally. And that's exactly what I have. But I forget to flip my canvas. I even have the quick keys here to flip my canvas. So don't know why I always forget. It's just not a part of my work process which really should be. So here I am doing some touches in there and just trying to figure out the whole clothing situation because I was not gonna go in there with the whole farmer's outfit <laughs> um, when this is kind of going for the dark, dark golf concept. So looking at it now, I keep thinking that maybe I should work a little bit more on that arm, the juncture in there with, between the elbow and the forearm is just not looking cute. Um, but it's okay because this is just a drafting layer. That's the beautiful thing is about drafting. It doesn't need to look perfect the first time and it ends up looking completely different when you do the line work. So right there, I decided to use some elements from my mood board and just have the hair hanging out kind of like in the bottom right corner of my mood board. There's like this entity there with like horns, really long horns. So I just wanted to give that element to the hair of having kind of like that wavy, that extension of the character. So then I'm here flipping the actual reference photo because I'm like, something feels weird. But then when I flipped it, I was like, it's really not that weird because perspective gives you that feeling of movement. So that was what I was noticing whenever I flipped the canvas. It just had um, a little too much movement for my eyes. So it just felt. All right, so here I am speeding through the drawing of the black spaghetti and adding the little mushroom elements to it because I thought they were cute to keep. I really don't know how to draw spaghetti, but by the end of phase three, we will because it's going to stay there. <laughs> so yeah, let's see, spaghetti. Anyway, so here the table is gonna be full of this spaghetti it kind of reminds me of worms I don't have any sense of direction they're just like squiggly lines at this point um, so mostly kind of like a placeholder all right so here I am drawing something completely out of my style out of my element I if you know me I am very spiritual and I don't like the whole dark demonic entity type of deal but you know the 
the song that we use for this concept art pretty much goes, you know, I hear voices in my head. I try to drown them out instead, right? So usually what people have as the voice in their head, it's usually telling them everything negative about themselves. Like, I know I have my inner monologue and lately it's been very positive. I've been working on that, but most people just have that negative voice in their head and it holds them back from a lot. It's their subconscious mind uh, making decisions for them or maybe they suffer from anxiety. So I wanted to interject some meaning into this concept art especially since a lot of people do suffer from hidden mental illnesses and that is unfortunately something I don't feel gets talked about enough um, on a day-to-day -day basis and people don't hold it as a priority when it really should be a priority especially now in current days current events so here I am just finishing my little internal goblins, <laughs> anxiety goblins. What do we want to call them? I, I like the word goblin, I don't know, gremlins, <laughs> but uh, yeah, pretty much this is my drafting stage for this concept art and I will be making part part two today and don't know how long it will take to post it's all based on Adobe Premiere so if you like my video my content make sure you subscribe ding the little bell and give me your feedback I want to know what type of videos you want to see next time well, that's all I have for now. Take care and thank you for watching.